Question number five says a freight train has a mass of 1.3 times 10 to the 7th kilograms. If the locomotive can exert a constant pull of 7.4 times 10 to the 5th newtons, how long does it take to increase the speed of the train from rest to 78 kilometers per hour? It wants the answer in minutes. Okay, so let's write down what we know first. We know the mass. We know the force. We don't know the acceleration. Also, we know the final velocity. Um, we know the initial velocity because it says that the, uh, it's moving from rest. So this is zero. This is 78 kilometers per hour. Uh, we don't know the time. So the time and the acceleration. This is 7.4 times 10 to the fifth newtons. And this is 1.3 times 10 to the seventh kilograms. All right, so we know that um, we can actually solve for A because uh, force equals mass times acceleration. So we divide by mass. Force over mass equals acceleration. And this um, acceleration will be in terms, as long as our mass is in kilograms and our force is in newtons, then our acceleration will be expressed in terms of meters per second squared. And so whenever we solve for our final velocity, we need it to be in meters per second squared as well, so that our acceleration and our final velocity were working with the same dimensions. Now we, we don't need it in per second squared, we need it in meters per second. Um, velocity doesn't go into per second squared. Okay, so that's the first thing we're going to do, is we're going to use dimensional analysis, and we're going to change our, our final velocity. But first, let's look at a few equations. So we have... Um, a new equation that solves for acceleration. Uh, actually, let me undo that. Force over mass equals acceleration. In the past, one of the f formulas we've used for uh, chapter 2 and chapter 3 was the change in velocity over time equaled acceleration. And what this broke down into was the final velocity minus the initial velocity uh, divided by time equaled acceleration. So we know that our initial velocity is starting from rest, so it's going to be zero. Our final velocity, we, we haven't um, broken that down into meters per second yet. Um, so we're just going to call it um, change in velocity. And our final velocity is going to be equal to our change of velocity. That's what I'm trying to say. In this case, it's going to. It's not in every case. So this is the actual formula, but for right now, we're just going to simplify it because our initial velocity is zero. So what we have, we have two equations for A. We can actually take this uh, solve for A and plug it in right here, and then we can solve for time. Because this is what we're really looking to do is solve for time. So we're taking our two knowns from this equation that solve for acceleration, and we're plugging it in in acceleration down here so that we're getting rid of our unknown value. Our unknown is acceleration. So what we get is our, our change in velocity over time, equals force divided by mass. And this will be um, expressed in terms of meters per second squared. So we can solve for our change in velocity, or we can solve for our time by saying that the change in velocity over force over mass equals time. So at this point you can plug and play, but you want to be um, sure that you change your 78 um, what was it, 78 kilometers per hour, you want to change that to meters per second. So there's, um, there's 1,000 meters for every kilometer, and that will cancel out your kilometers, and you will get 78,000 meters per hour, and then you can times that by uh, one hour every 3,600 seconds, and um, reduce that down. And it's approximately um, 21.67 meters per second. So when you come back and put your change of velocity, it's going to, it's going to be equal to 21.67. So 21.67 meters per second. I'm going to divide that by the force over the mass, which the force was 7.4 times 10 to the fifth. Um, newtons and 
over the mass was 1.3 times 10 to the 7 um, kilograms. You want to put that in parentheses so that it gets done. And actually, whenever you plug it into your calculator, plug it in like that, and then put the dividing, and then put parentheses around all of that when you divide it in under 21. And you should get an answer of about 380. Point four, approximately um, seconds. That's your time you solve for t, and so you want to divide that by um, sixty. There's uh, so you would say there's um, there's in in one minute there's sixty seconds, and so your seconds would cancel out. So you're dividing three eighty point four by sixty, and it equals approximately six point three four minutes.